I'm here today to talk about tackling a problem that is deeply personal to me and which I imagine is very deeply personal to many of you in this room, if not everyone, in some way. I'm talking about the problem of cancer, a disease which in 2010 became the number one killer worldwide, a disease which one in three of us will experience in our lifetimes. And if we assume for a moment that the average age of the audience is 65, which I think is probably a safe assumption myself notwithstanding, then one in six of us in this room will have already experienced cancer. So I'm curious, just by a show of hands, if all the cancer survivors in the room would raise their hands. Wow, this is an incredible number. Yeah. So I feel in very good company in this audience because I too am a cancer survivor. Uh, back in 2006, at the age of 18, I was diagnosed with a tumor right in the very center of my head. It was pressing on my brainstem and wrapped around major arteries. And to make a long story short, I ended up having surgery, very complicated surgery to remove this tumor, which turned out to be a rare form of bone cancer called chordoma. Unfortunately, there's a high rate of recur uh, recurrence, uh, no effective chemotherapies, and as you heard, an average survival of just seven years. So at the time, I was an undergraduate at Duke University studying environmental engineering, really having the time of my life. And frankly, that seven-year statistic just wasn't acceptable. So together with my mom, we basically resolved to do everything in our power to try to change that statistic and bring about a cure. And so being the engineering student that I was, my first inclination was to try to do everything possible to wrap my head around this problem that was before me. And so as I, I started scouring the medical literature, I found that chordoma was one of hundreds of similarly rare cancers. And like many of those rare cancers, there was very little research being done, very few people studying the disease. But as luck would have it, it turned out that the only federally funded chordoma researcher in the entire country happened to be an oncologist right in my backyard at Duke University. And so being the eager young college student that I was, I went to this researcher, Dr. Kelly, and to make a long story short, convinced him to let me uh, work in his lab and, 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 and give it a shot to try to find a cure for my disease. And I have to say that working in the lab was an incredibly exciting and empowering uh, and, and just uh, wonderful experience, but it was also a very eye-opening experience because I saw firsthand the challenges that researchers who study rare cancers face. For example, we couldn't find access to high-quality chordoma tissue, which is basically the starting point for all of modern cancer research. We couldn't get access to valid chordoma cell lines, which were needed to test new drugs in the clinic. And most importantly, we were working in total isolation. We didn't know who else was studying this disease. We didn't know whether we were duplicating their efforts. We didn't know whether they were facing the same challenges we were facing or whether they perhaps had, had found solutions for some of these challenges. And so together, my mother and I realized that unless we solve these fundamental systemic problems that are standing in the way of progress, we were never going to find a cure in my lifetime or any time in the foreseeable future. So in 2007, together, we started the Cordoma Foundation to bring together a multidisciplinary group of researchers around a common set of goals and, and really to systematically break down the barriers that stand in the way of progress. And since then, I'm very happy to say we've distributed valid Cordoma cell lines to over 31 different labs. We've recruited dozens of new researchers, most of whom were not studying Cordoma in the past, into this new field. We've brokered numerous collaborations so that when a researcher in one lab runs into a problem, we can quickly connect them with a researcher in another lab that may have the solution. Or when a discovery in one lab is made, we don't have to wait months or years for that to be published. We can quickly push that information to labs that we know are equipped to build upon those discoveries. So I'm really happy to say that I think this is working. Uh, we, we're seeing more and more researchers collaborating, more and more researchers entering the field. Uh, in the past two years, more has been learned about the biology of this disease than probably in the past two decades combined. And I'm really excited because I don't think it has to stop at chordoma. As I said, chordoma is one of hundreds of similarly rare cancers, each of which are facing similar challenges and I think could benefit from similar solutions. And so while each one of these rare cancers like chordoma may be a small problem, when you add them up and put them together, they're actually an enormous problem. They, they actually account for a quarter of all cancer cases. And just to put that in perspective, that's the number four leading cause of death. Rare cancers are the number four leading cause of death behind common cancers, uh, uh, heart disease, and stroke. And so I think 
we have an enormous challenge in front of us, but I, after working in the lab for two years, I'm absolutely convinced that cures for many of these rare cancers are within reach. And I'm similarly convinced that every single one of us has something to offer in the search for cures for those diseases. So I'll just leave you with this and say that I'm in a race against time to find a cure for my disease, and I know many of you in this room are also facing a similar race against time. And I need all the bright ideas and solutions that I can find. And so I just encourage everyone, if you have ideas, if you have experiences or lessons that you've learned in your own fight against cancer or your loved one's fight against cancer, please come and find me after the talk. I'd really love to talk with you. And thank you very much for your attention.